Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome to episode 161 of Freshly Grounded. This episode is with Arnold Danjuma. Um, Arnold is a uh, premiership football player uh, who plays for AFC Bournemouth. And um, do you know what, a guy who uh, we we got in touch over social media some time back. And this, uh, he, was, he was so inspiring, an incredibly friendly person. Uh, someone to get to the level of success that he's at only 23 years old, uh, playing for the Premier League. But just attributing all of his success to Allah, as you will see in this episode, um, uh, so giving and and the conversations that we've had kind of over the phone and stuff, um, he's always been so um, eager to, to to just help the community in general uh, with whatever in in whatever way he can. Um, so so we ended up doing a podcast together. It's tough doing a podcast kind of over technology. You can't kind of have like a natural conversation that you would when you're face to face with someone, obviously. Um, and generally, I like to kind of meet people in person like a few times before doing an episode. But Alhamdulillah, Allah allowed us to our paths to cross and we did an episode together. And um, I hope you guys get to see kind of how, how genuine and sincere this brother is. Um, he really, really is, man. <clears throat> Um, before we get into the episode, I just want to let you guys know um, that you can support uh, Freshly Grounded by going to patreon.com forward slash Freshly Grounded. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Freshly Grounded, um, especially in a time like now uh, with our events being cancelled and with everything being up in the air, uh, your support uh, would mean more now than ever. Um, to help us keep running, to help us keep maintaining our studio, help us keep maintaining our team. Uh, it would mean the world to us. Uh, so please do check that out. Also, we're helping raise money uh, with Human Appeal uh, for children and women who, families who are fleeing war in Syria. Uh, so you can help them out by going to justgiving.com forward slash freshly dash grounded. And without any further ado, this is episode 161 of Freshly Grounded with Arnau Danjuma. And welcome to Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast by best friends Faisal and Sam. Huh? I welcome. I said welcome to Freshly Grounded. The, no, after that bit, the brand new podcast. And after that bit, by best friends Faisal and Sam. Really? In that case, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, brother. How are you? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, very well. How are you? How are you, man? All good. Just uh, to be honest, this Corona thing is, is a bit of a madness. That was boring, bro. It's boring. Yeah. I'm. I thank you for joining me, man. Because I know that we were trying to make this happen for a while, but you're very busy, and which us kind of trying to get our kind of schedules to match um, was a bit difficult. But yeah. alhamdulillah, we, we the, because of isolation, we, we were forced into it. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's all good, bro. Anyway, uh, no, it's really it's a, it's a pleasure. I'll be, uh, honest, to be honest, I like I followed the account, like. I think a while ago already, like, and the podcasts really? you've been doing, bro, they are really, in my opinion, they're really good. Like, my friends and my family as well, we all watch them together sometimes. It's good, bro. Ah, subhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Uh, when did you come uh, come over from the Netherlands to, to the UK? Um, just a month ago. Um, but I came from Belgium, though. Uh, I played, from Belgium, sorry. I played last year in Belgium for Club Rouge. Uh, and Alhamdulillah, I made a transfer to, to the UK. So that's been, I think, August last year August so I've been in now for What's some it months like? it's to be honest I, I like it though and that's not even a lie like the people here they are they are like really generous in my opinion like in, in Holland <laughs> it's like I don't know but people are a bit more uh, they are more harder they're more tougher in, 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 in my country though from where I'm from and uh, I don't know here when I, when I tell the English people yeah that they are like really generous and and stuff like that they always be don't believe me but like it's really true like you're the people here they're honestly they are a lot generous more more generous than, I, than i'm used to really yeah because english people have a stereotype of actually being quite stuck up yeah i guess so i guess so now it's really i've, I've enjoyed it so far but just yeah to be honest I, for me it's not really a matter of where i live i, I think i can manage everywhere if it's, if it's pain germany is it, is it, uh, is it tough everywhere. is it tough about your family Oh, no. uh, to be honest, uh, my mother, she lived in the UK before uh, she came to Holland. So um, when I made my transfer to the UK, uh, my mother came with me. So she, lives in, so she lives in the UK as well with my little sister. And uh, my father and my older brother and sister, they live in Holland. Uh, my older brother, he studies at the university in Holland. And my other sister, she lived in the UK as well because she studied at the Imperial College in London University. But okay. she uh, graduated and she's back in Holland now as well. So it's 
like since we we were little, we haven't really been a lot together. So it's like I'm used to being alone, though. But my mother is here, and she always comes to visit in the weekends.、Uh, a lot of friends come to visit in the weekends as well when I'm free, and it's all good, bro. It's not that far. With, with the plane, it's like forty minutes, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. But bro, so. You mentioned、um, they, your friends come and visit when you're free, but we know that in the field that you're in, at the kind of、uh, level you're in right now in your career, being free is something that's like <laughs> very, very rare. So, wh- how、yeah. are you dealing with isolation right now? Because I'm, I'm assuming that you're still having to train a bit to keep yourself going and to make yeah, sure yeah, that you're of kind、course. of you're, you're resting your injury and stuff like that. No, of course. Like we have, we've got all the players in our team. We all got like our individual、uh, program, like what we should do and.、Um, I just recently came back from an injury as well, so it's like really important to maintain the level of what I've been doing. So it's like, yeah, honestly, it's like I'll take some days off as well. You know what I mean? Because there's not really a date when we need to be back in training up to now or when the games are starting. So everybody's living a bit in a grey area. When we we're not really we're not really know what we're gonna do. But I'm just training every day. I'm just like running.、Uh, Bro, core stability, just the normal stuff, just just to be active as well. You know what I mean? I, I'll, 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 honestly, I'll get mad if I need to, if I if I can't do anything. Like, yeah, I was speaking to a brother about this yesterday, saying that if you just stay in the home the whole time, you, it's going to be impossible to be in a calorie deficit、yeah. because you're always going to be you're going to be burning like no calories. Uh, because even when you're out and about, normally you're walking to the car, you're walking, you know, to the station yeah, or yeah. something. That you're you're burning some some calories, even if you're not exercising. But if you stay at home this whole time, you're not burning any calories at all, really. And then you're just eating and eating, and it's gonna be very easy to put on weight if you're not doing some sort of exercise. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's true. Like especially now, everyone is in isolation. I think it's everyone is like really noticing what you're. Really doing in your normal life, like the things you take for granted, what you're doing, like just on a, on a daily basis, like going to the store and just speaking with people. Like now, now because it's impossible now, I I think people start to realize how important it really is just to go out and just to you know just to have a walk, speak with people, and just you know have a daily activity in your normal life. Well, when I spoke to you. Um, kind of on voice note,、uh, some time back when we were kind of planning the episode, you mentioned that. Well, I said that it would be nice to do an episode together, especially considering you know we can do it over technology because we're in isolation. You mentioned that it's important、uh, to do something because、uh, the people are going through a, a tough time, and、um, generally as a society we're going through a difficult time because of、um, uh, both economically in terms of people's health、uh, and stuff like that.、Um, why is it that is so important to you that you think so much about the,、uh, the the community? You think so much about people, and you want to be able to spread some kind of positivity. Why is that important to you? Yeah, it's like it comes from from yeah different point of views though. Like there are a lot of there are a lot of things that 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 show me that it's important. To be honest, like obviously you know in Islam it's very important to help your neighbor out, to help your brothers out in a difficult time, and.、Um, Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Like I have the the needs to help some other people, so I just feel like it's important to help people that are in need as well. And not 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 only now, but like always, it's good to help other people that are in need. But especially when it's a tough time, you should like be more handful to other people and be more willing to help them. Like for example, now people that are buying all this all the food and all the drinks and everything in the stores, like I can't imagine like how. Yeah, how people are doing that and why they're doing that because you always, you will benefit from it yourself. But other people, like the people that don't have a lot of money or can't afford it to buy it, like they will suffer from it. So it's like you need to be aware of、uh, what the situation really is, so you can still help other people. And bro, it's I, I don't. It's like you know, it's <laughs> you you can't really explain it, but it's like just in tough times, you should be there for each other, right? And、uh, yeah, whether it's someone you know, whether it's someone you, you don't know, it doesn't matter who you are. Like everyone that. Can help a yeah can 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 need a hand you, you yeah you should you should give your hand to them you should help them bro in my opinion that's it yeah it's true that it, at at some point in life everybody needs someone to lean on so if you can be that extra person that can provide something you know you it, it, it will mean a lot to someone yeah. yeah of course and yeah I think especially with me as well when I was younger、um, I didn't really feel that a lot of people were willing to help me so I I really、uh, know how it is. To be want to be wanting help, but like not getting the help, if you know what I mean. 
So like, I what's that? What is that like? Because I think that there, there is, you're in a job right now that is probably a a lot more better, one of the most sought after kind of careers for young young boys, and on top of that, um, one that is very difficult to get into, extremely difficult. <laughs> Um, and that's even if you're in the UK. But to get in the Premier League, if you're outside of the UK, you know, um, and may Allah put baraka in it and increase you yeah, I mean, and I mean, give you more success. Um, but but how is that? How was that journey for you? And, and and what's it like once you're actually there? Is it because there's a lot of um, a lot of people kind of imagine what life is like being a Premier League player, right? And um, we had the uh, I, I was speaking to. Um, uh, Subhanallah, uh, Rudy Justed, who who plays for Middlesbrough, I did an event with him, and I was I asked him the same question, and I said, "What's it like?" Because a lot of people want to be where you are, and he said, "Subhanallah, um, he's uh, he, uh, another Muslim brother, uh, along with uh, me and uh, Rudy actually had children around the same time, and we both ended up calling our <laughs> son uh, Zakaria." Yeah. Allah, um, and Rudy said that he said, he said, you know, w- when you get there. It's not like what you think because that becomes normal for you. And so when that becomes normal for you, you still have the same problems that other people have. But people think that you don't have any yeah. problems in your life anymore. Is it, do, would you say you can relate to that? No, definitely. Like what I always think is like people underestimate what it really takes to be where we are right now. Like what I've seen is I've seen a lot of people that, that like they want the success, but they don't want, they're not willing to work as hard as someone else who has got the success. Like, it's obviously like, if you're a Premier League player or you're successful in life with any other job or with any other thing that, that makes you successful, like, there is, you, are, you, you, are need, you, you need to be willing to put in the work. Like, you can't get the success without the work. And people always only see the nice stuff, but it's no, it's no more nowadays through social media and, you know, stuff like that. But like, on the background, like there are a lot of players that do a lot of hard work and you're not seeing what we do every day on the training pitch, what you're doing at home, what you're doing with your food, uh, what you're going through with your families. And there are a lot of stuff that people don't see. And like, that's the other side of it. Like the, the coin always has two sides. So what I've realized is like, really the, the, there is no destination. Like the journey is everything. Like you can, you can you, yeah, you, you just need to start somewhere. But like, as soon as you, you reach your goal, there'll be a next goal to take. So for example, when I was young, um, I wanted to be a player of the, first, of the first team. So you'll go through the journey of coming to the first team, but when you're at the, f- at the first team, like it continues, but only on a, on a higher level. So, you, so because on a higher level, the other things that you have been doing, you need to be doing them as well, but on a higher level as well. So that it, 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 it will only get worse the higher you come, you know what I mean? So like if you, you you need to get more mental yeah mental uh, you need to get mental uh, how how do I say it uh, good you need to get mental strength. strong yeah you need to get stronger mentally as well you need to get physically uh, stronger you need to understand the game better you need to communicate with people better like there are a lot of a lot of a lot of stuff that you need to work on and there is no there is no 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 destination in football you always need to get better you know you always need to get higher and uh, the higher you come the more tougher it will be. So what, what would your message be to younger people who are listening to this, who are trying to be successful in whatever field it is? Um, what, would you, what would your key message be? Yeah, honestly, if, if, I, if I look back to myself, like my deen was everything. Like, um, alhamdulillah, like in the tough times and even in the good times, like um, I always turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that was my, 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 always my, my center. That was always the, the, the thing I, 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 n- I never took away. Like, even if, you know, if times are bad, times are good. Like, if I, if I had the, the best success of my life, I'll, I'll need to pray. If, if it's going wrong, you need to pray. You always need to be grateful for the things you have in life. Like, my, my thing is, um, it is very important not to get attached to the wrong things because that will lead you on a different road and that will lead you to the wrong path. Like if you have nothing in life, you need to, be, you need to see and realize that there are always people that, that will have a worse situation that you're in. So you always need to be alhamdulillah, you always need to be grateful for what you have at the moment and everything you get, you know, you always need to be grateful for everything you get and, and just grow with it. Like people always think uh, like the, the, the best things in life 
other materialistic things and to be honest the higher you get and the more you see those stuff if you if you if you you, you need to keep this, those things in your hand and not in your heart you know what i mean because this, mm. the, as soon as it comes in your heart it will get poisoned and you end up in the wrong way you need to be focused ma- maintain the goals and and yeah be willing to go for that as soon as you're distracted and even even on a high level everything will get taken away I was going to say that because, uh, you, you know, you, you mentioned your dean. And when you look at, for example, your Instagram page, you're one of the few kind of um, athletes. I, I, I see Sonny Bill Williams, uh, the rugby player, as another one who, yeah. you know, you very openly talk about your faith. You very or, or, uh, openly talk about, you know, uh, attributing your success to Allah. Um, ha, 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 why do you like to kind of push out your message and, and, and always relate it back to Allah on a, on a, on a public platform? Because that's very inspiring to see. And it's very refreshing to see. Yeah, to be honest, that's just because in, in the difficult times where I've been through, like, uh, I always came back through Allah. So, like, because of Him, I have what I have now. So, like, it's not good to, because I have the things I wanted in life now, to, like, have a different kind of view in life like even though everything i've i've got in my opinion is because of him so yeah that's 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 not really a to be honest that's not really like an intention or a purpose behind it it's just on my social media platforms and the things i say just bro it's just to be honest it's just the things i want to say i'm not really the kind of guy that plans stuff to say or think about a lot of stuff like this is what i want to say this is my message i just want to inspire the young guys um they want to be something in life and you know i've got a lot of haters as well to be honest <laughs> really yeah i don't but, know how anybody uh, can hate such a friendly person <laughs> subhanallah nah in, in football it's normal bro you always get misjudged by a lot of people and a lot of people will hate for no reason but like if there's only one person that i can inspire and there's only one person i can help in life that's enough for me bro subhanallah that that reminds me i was I think I've spoken about this before on the podcast. I remember seeing an interview um, years ago by this guy who um, said this quote. He was like, he was he he used to run a clothing line, and I think he ended up getting the quote from from a rapper. I think he got it from Tupac. The, but the quote was beautiful, and it was he said, "I might not be able to touch the hearts of millions of people, but I might go on and touch the heart of one person who will then yeah. go on to touch the hearts of millions." Yeah. And I was like, "Wow, Subhanallah." <laughs> That's exactly what I mean. Like. Bro, I'll never be able in life to reach out to the whole world or to a lot of... to Yeah, I might be, but like, that's not really my purpose. If it happens, alhamdulillah, I'm really satisfied. Like, the more people I can motivate and the more people I can help to get what they want in life, alhamdulillah, always, brother. But it's not really about um, inspiring everyone. It's about inspiring the ones that want to be inspired. You know what I mean? So everyone that, that wants to be motivated and everyone that wants to get someone in life and I can give them that 1% that they need always brother even talking about the kind of the fact that materialistic things are not the kind of ultimate success it reminds me of the 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 big news today I don't know if you saw it it was this um, 13 year old boy and I I was writing something about this for my Instagram I haven't posted it yet but um, this 13 year old boy Muslim boy uh, his name was Ismail uh, Ismail uh, Abdul Wahab and he's 13 no 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 health conditions uh, no prior health conditions from what they report in and yesterday he passed away from from coronavirus and I, um, I I I wrote that you know he was 13 years old and we sometimes we're using this isolation period as just a, a an option to rest you know but Sometimes Allah puts these things in our uh, path for us to wake up, you know, and it's a test for us and it's yeah. a sign for us. That 13 year old boy may have been a sign for any of us who were thinking, ah, oh, I'm 25, oh, I'm 19, I'll be all right, inshallah. Inshallah, we will be okay. Inshallah. But it's not about the coronavirus, it's about are we ever going to turn to Allah and stop chasing the materialistic things? Because as you've said, you never find the satisfaction that you want out of the materialistic yeah. things. There's, n- there's never been a feeling. Of, bu- of buying something You know the feeling When you buy something You really want That feeling Is never as good As just Waking up for Fajr And yeah. knowing that You prayed your Fajr yeah. you know, And, and that, that feeling Comes from inside the heart It's a different kind Of satisfaction Yeah you're right Like the things With materialistic Is like There's no end to it So 
there are always bigger things. If you have the biggest car, there'll always be a bigger car. If you have the biggest house, mm. there'll always be a bigger mansion. But like the so. things, the things that, that, that's worth no money at all, like the family, your, your salah, your, you know, your deen, stuff like that. It's a different kind of, of satisfaction because there, there is, there is no, um, there is no failure. You, you, you're not, you're not willing. Yeah. How do I say it? It's like, you're not searching for something bigger. Like, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the biggest and the almighty and the, the, the most yeah, high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, if you, if you, if, if, for example, if you want to be the best footballer in the world or you want to be the, or you want to have the biggest house, you will always have a bigger house. So you will, ne you will never stop chasing it. If you, if you, if you're, if your wish is to have the, the, you want to be the richest person on earth, you always have more money. So this, the satisfaction will never be there because there's no end to it. And with, with Islam, it's different, as you know, brother. It's like, it's, 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 it's different. And it's hard to explain as well. You know, like, I've, this is, this is what, my, what, what some friends of, of mine told me as well. Like, I've never been to Mecca, and I really, really, really want to go, inshallah. SubhanAllah. And uh, two friends of mine recently just uh, went there. And they came back, and the first thing I asked them is like, how is it there? How is it there? And the first thing they said is, brother, to be honest, I can give you all the words that I know, but I can't explain the feeling I got when, I, when I'm there. Okay. So like there are some things you can't explain. You just need to go through it yourself, and I think this this the same. Well, let's talk a bit about mental strength. You spoke you spoke a bit about mental strength earlier, but um, uh, you you came to the UK and um, you you did your transfer, and then very very uh, quickly uh, after that, or very shortly after that, you had your injury, uh, which meant you were out for a good few months until pretty much now, and then this has happened. So. Um, how does a person mentally, after kind of getting that transfer, moving over, moving their life over, settling down, you know, just getting a couple games in, um, and then and then that happening? How do you mentally deal with that? How do you battle with that? What gets you through that? Uh, to be honest, rather than again, it's it's my it's my dinner, my prayer um, for me because to be honest, this especially this season, I made my transfer. I came to AFC Bournemouth, alhamdulillah, and um, I got injured at the beginning. Uh, I came back from injury and then I got injured again. And um, after the first injury, I started playing. Um, I started playing. I gave my uh, first assist, and I, you know, I was doing. I was doing all right. And um, I got injured again, so there was again a backlash. And uh, to be honest, like we're all humans, so like me personally, I've been through a lot already in my life. I had to grow up really fast, and uh, so I know what life's about. And I know how to be mental strength, and you know how to be mental strong, and to get through. Uh, tough times but still uh, you're human so obviously like the, the first the first days I'm really 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 angry and I'm really bothered with a lot of stuff because the football in my life means a lot to me and it's the thing I love to do the most every day so if I can't do that you know it's it's like my life is it's not completed so I got injured again, I made my transfer and I really wanted to prove uh, myself for the team, for the fans. I really wanted to show uh, the world what I'm capable of. So, yeah, I can act tough and I can say here that uh, it didn't hurt me or didn't touch me, but it did, bro. Like, um, yeah, I was angry, I was bothered as well. Um, but then again, after some days, you need to find, uh, you need to go back to the basics again. So, bro, it's just about praying, having uh, sabr, faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the thing is, you always know that the test you get, once you've, once you've passed the test, once you've through the test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you always get a reward and you always get something bigger, something better. And you, you never know where the barakah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in. So maybe the injury was good for me as well. So you never know. Yeah, you don't know what's, what, 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 yeah. kind of what it stopped or, 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 or something worse could have happened. You're right, subhanAllah. Yeah, so that's that's that, that's that's how you always should think. But although it's it's it can, it can be difficult sometimes because... You know, if life doesn't go if life doesn't go the way you want, it's always a bit a bit of a pity. But Sahih. Sahih. you need to go through it, bro. You need to go through it. The, alhamdulillah, you're you're still incredibly long, uh, incredibly young. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> I don't know I'm in terms old, of bro. <laughs> actually, 23 years old. I'm if I'm not old, mistaken, man, you can't. Feel old. No, 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 no. You can't. You're not allowed to call yourself old at that age, actually, man. So I'm, I'm old. But, I'm old. That's right. Being being where you are at the at the young age that you're that you're at. What was childhood like for you? How was growing up, and you, you, you said that you never really settled in yeah. one place and, uh, and stuff like that. So, what was what was your journey like? Um, no, to be honest, there are a lot of uh, journalists and a lot of interviewers that ask about it uh, through my entire career, and um, there are a lot of a lot of things that I always keep private because the thing is, um, there are like 
I don't want to involve my family in, in, in social media. I don't want to involve my family um, in the newspaper or stuff like that. Um, but, like, to be honest, there were a lot of politics and there were a lot of, um, yeah, things that were tough for me. For example, uh, I live with foster families and stuff like that for a short period of time, though. And, um, you know, just, just like... Just like tough periods, bro. Like there, there's, there's not yeah, of course, there's, general there's, tests. Yeah, there's not, 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 not a lot of food on the table. You don't have a lot of luxuries and stuff like that. But uh, Alhamdulillah, for me, that's a different kind of view as well. Like there's, I've, I've met some people. To be honest, some people, some children, they're going through the same things, and um, there are a lot of children that find it difficult to deal with it. So I can't really tell you, like, what was it for me that pushed me through it. Because um, at a young age, I wasn't that religious as I am now. Like, the older I became, the more religious I be, became as well. Because that's where my rest came from. That's where my inner peace came from. So, I've just noticed that the Islam helped me, like, keep, yeah, with, with keeping inner peace and, like, being calm and being straight and focused on the right things. And, uh, yeah, alhamdulillah, it, uh, it has been good. Subhanallah. So that's such a similar story for so many people in that... Um you know, you may not have been as practicing when you were younger. And I know for me, I started practicing about 20, when I was about 20 years old. And I feel like it saved my life. Like coming to Allah, I don't know how the, how it happened, but I remember the specific feeling of just feeling like, okay, Allah's protecting me now. You know what I mean? Like yeah. uh, feeling like that connection, you finally get that connection. And when you get that, you do feel like it saves your life. Like in it, not in the way where you are about to do something crazy and your life has been saved, but more so like the rest of my life, inshallah, will be inshallah. lived in a way in which I'm able to kind of see things through the lens of my religion and through my faith. And that will protect me. I used to think yeah. to myself, um, I used to have the age 40 in my head. I used to think that when I'm 40 years old, that's when I'll start practicing Islam, you know, when I'm 40, yeah. because, you know, I'm starting to get old now. I have to <laughs> repent for my sins. And that was how mad my, my head was. And then, what you realize is that, A, yes, you, you never know what's around the corner. You never know when you're going to pass away. But also, even even if you did know when you were going were to pass away, and even if that was when you're 80, 90, 100 years old, it still just makes your life better, a better quality life, happier, if you practice Islam as soon as possible. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. With me, it was, um, to be honest, it came natural, like... Um, Alhamdulillah, I have the same friends I have when I was when I was little. We all went through the same things, and we're still together. And uh, yeah. most of my friends were Muslim as well, and I'm born as a Muslim as well. So it was always like they went to the mosque and they went to an Islamic school. And on the other and on, on, <laughs> at the other hand, I was going outside playing football. So I went to the house and said, "Hey, come and play football." And they were always like, oh, "I can't play football, bro. I need to go to the mosque." And I was always laughing at them. So I was like, "I need to go to the mosque, bro. I'm going to play football." So like. At the end, to be honest, I really, really regretted that I didn't went with them to the mosque and to the school because now, bro, they have a lot of knowledge ahead of me. Like, there are a lot of things I can still learn. Now, I need to catch up with, with a lot of things. So, I've, for example, now I have an Arabic teacher uh, because I couldn't read uh, Arabic. So, he's learning me, like, every day, one hour, how to read Arabic and how to read the Quran in a proper way. So, there are a lot of things that I still need to catch up with. And, um, subhanAllah, it's funny how, how you know, how 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 yeah how 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 the time uh, turns things around though. Alhamdulillah, I was um, uh, I I I sometimes I, I feel embarrassed to to be um, speaking to you about football, knowing how how much um, you know I lack in watching it or how like I, I'm I don't share the same passion as much in uh, in the game as as many people. Are. Uh, when I was having the same conversation with Rudy. They they asked me to I uh, they asked me to host this event where they, it was full of uh, it was like a panel of Muslim footballers right, and I said to them I said that um, you could probably find a better host than me to do this event because I'm probably not as um, I don't have as like as much knowledge about the game but then when I was doing the event I realized that especially being brought up in the UK the game of football is in some way always implemented in your life. Because when you go to school, you have to support a, t a team when you go to school. Yeah. You have to support a team when you go to university. And um, and naturally, the go-to thing that you do in a playground is you play football. And even as you get older, at the very least, you're going once a week to the fiver side. Um, and I I I'll give you an insight into how good I am at football. Um, I'm the goalkeeper in fiver side. <laughs> so... 
Uh, I've been told. <laughs> I've been told I'm really not good. even an eleven against eleven. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I've been told I'm a really good goalkeeper, but um, I have a feeling that's just because I'm really bad on the field, so they just kind of tell me that. But. Alhamdulillah. Uh, but, you know, I think some of us have it and some of us just don't. <laughs> no, I'm not even so. good at FIFA, to be honest. No, to be I'm honest, I, I don't play FIFA a lot anymore than I, as I used to, though. For me, it's all about Call of Duty now. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, bro. Subhanallah. What what um workouts are you managing to keep up to at, at at home other than the running while you're while you're in isolation? How are you able to stay fit? Uh, I took some dumbbells from the club, uh, some bands as well, elastic bands. Um, I have a core stability mat, and you know it's just uh, like you can't like simulate the training or you can't simulate the game. So you you will, you, you will never end up doing the same as you would do at the club, but. Still, like the, the little things you can do, just like uh, keeping fit, uh, yeah, keeping fit and stuff like that. That's the most you can do. What about are you are you able to kind of loosen up on your diet a bit while you're off, or, or are you strict with yourself? No, no. To be honest, uh, alhamdulillah, like I I really don't gain weight fast. So um, okay. yeah, anything with me is like I'm really really uh, aware of what I need to eat now because of the injury I, I've got. Because I had a bone injury, like it's really important to still get my vitamin D and uh, calcium and stuff like that. So um, I've got all the supplements at home, fish oil, uh, vitamin B, all the things. So uh, no, I'm, I'm really aware of my weight because honestly, you don't know when the, when the season is starting again. But like, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just 100% sure that I'm prepared for when it starts. If it starts tomorrow, yeah, I'm done. 100. I can go. Yeah. So that's it. You just need to be prepared for when it's going to start again. Have they have clubs always been kind of accommodating to your faith and stuff like that? Come again? Have clubs always been accommodating to you, uh, your faith, like when you need to pray and stuff like that? Uh, to be honest, like some clubs more than, than other clubs, but like AFC Bournemouth, like since day one, they have done everything for me. I've got my own prayer room and... Uh, Wow! Like the um, we have uh, an, a, a girl that works here as well, and she's like a team manager. She does a lot for um, for the players when they come, and she bought for me a praying mat as well. And like oh, wow. really, did, but to be honest, AFC Bournemouth is for me. It's I've never been so good accommodated as as here. To be honest, the the first day I came here, the chef asked me. He said, "You're a Muslim, right?" I say, "Yeah, I'm a Muslim." He said, oh, "Okay, we bought halal food for you, so the chicken is halal." Wow! Really, they've been since since day one. They've done everything for me. Wow, that's amazing. Um, Anna, listen, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, I'm very, very grateful for you taking time out for us um, uh, to kind of do this interview. Um, just kind of as a, like a last point, uh, um, you know, I mentioned in, in when we were talking. Um, you and, and earlier on you mentioned that kind of it's important for us to think about our neighbors think about our brothers um and there are people kind of going through such a, such a tough time in different um in all different angles right now so uh, what would your kind of message be to people generally who are stuck at the house and who are maybe not feeling mentally strong right now uh, and maybe they're kind of getting themselves into kind of a downward spiral mentally uh, what would your message be to those people um, what would my message be to those people? <laughs> I put you on nah, the spot. You put, you put me on the spot, really. No, um, bro, with me, what I really believe is you need to be content with the life you have, bro. If you can really find inner peace and you can really uh, see the good things in life in every situation you're in, you always end up at a better place. Like, you always grow, you always grow out of it, you always be happy and you always be satisfied. And if you're not if you're not able to see the good things in life or the good things you have and appreciate the things you have, you'll never be satisfied with your own life or you'll never be able to grow in your life. That's, that's, that's the main thing, bro. Even during this, this, this tough period for everyone, you need to be content with, your, with what you have. You need to be able to see the good things in life. And alhamdulillah, and inshallah, try to make the best of it, brother. And as soon as it's gone, you need to fly and make, make the best of it. What? Well, when it's done, well, yeah. next time you're in London, inshallah, you have to come down to the studio, inshallah, inshallah. we'll do a proper episode, face to face. All good, yeah. all good, I'll make sure I come. Inshallah. Jazakallah, inshallah. Okay, bro. Well, yeah, brother, thank you for your time, thank you for your time. Thank you.